Thank you very much. I can assure you, you are not the only dreamer. <laughs> um, um, and we got a little bit more time, so now, before each of and every of the panelists will uh, react to the others, I want to invite Marvin, our honorary guest, please. Ah, um, somebody who lost his watch, some women who lost her watch. Just check. You are? Okay. Okay. Uh, th thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, let me just say that, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, much of the practice of medicine could be described as stratified medicine, especially in cancer, where we uh, have some variables. Uh, and if you take Dr. Berger's uh, slide, he mentioned breast cancer. If a woman is uh, ER positive and uh, HER2 positive, uh, they'll uh, recommend Herceptin as a, a, a primary uh, treatment. And, and that's stratifying the patients. And the, uh, many of the studies in cancer are completely empirical in that we don't really know why they might work or may not work. Now, when we talk about personalized medicine, uh, the implication is a step beyond the uh, stratified practice of medicine, where one wants to take into account the special features of the patient. And the implication is that now with the ability to uh, uh, have a genomic profile, we should be able to use the genomic profile to specify how to treat the patient. But if you were to take cancer, and Dr. Berger is uh, much more of an authority than I am, it's not only the choice of the primary therapy, but the primary therapy may be drug combinations, different doses, how long do you treat the patient? What's the, how do you uh, deal with uh, other kinds of therapy, like radiation therapy, sur surgery? Uh, and some of the hemopoietic diseases, like leukemia, you might want to have maintenance therapy. Uh, then many of the patients will relapse and uh, Eventually, how do you treat the relapsed patients? And you have the same problem. So it's very complicated. Now, the, uh, unless one has theories that tell you what to do, we generally have observations, and from the observations generate theories, which uh, 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 tend, we hope explain or partially explain what goes on. Now. When you have the genomic profile, we're dealing with thousands of uh, d data points. And when we have a population of uh, patients, it, at most, it's in the hundreds. So if you have thousands of variables and you're looking for something, you'll always find lots of things. Now. If you, this panel is supposed to be on the future of clinical trials. Now, if we're going to try to uh, investigate what, we, what people are calling personalized medicine, where we make treatment decisions on the basis of uh, not only the stratified data, but on the genomic data, it's going to require uh, in clinical trials, which we, we can control and we can care, uh, collect important data, that every patient on a clinical trial would have to have a genomic profile. And if we we're going to, because we need the data to motivate new theories, if we were going to do that, the cost would be so high that many of the studies we carry on now will have to be reduced with regard to patient numbers 
uh, because there's just a limited amount of data available uh, to carry out these clinical trials. And then the most important uh, thing in uh, carrying out clinical trials is the reason for starting a clinical trial. You need uh, new insight, new clues from the laboratory which would motivate the clinical trial. And many clinical trials are not motivated by new ideas, but they may be exploring uh, putting drug combinations together, that is, several drugs which uh, each by themselves don't produce much of an effect, but the thought is by combining them you get uh, perhaps uh, a greater benefit. So that if one is going to go ahead and, per and make a dent in personalized medicine, we're going to collect genomic data on people going into uh, clinical studies. Since there's a limited amount of uh, funding available for clinical trials, they're going to have a much reduced database. Uh, I think that investigator-initiated studies are likely to suffer because uh, most of the funding will go to the larger trials where they're collecting large amounts of information in an attempt to uh, try to choose therapies on an individual patient basis. So I think that uh, in Mira, Mira's words, she calls them buzzwords, and uh, I, I, being a bit of a cynic, uh, uh, I thought of it, you do it. And, and it might take a very long time to be successful. If the problem only involved a handful of genes, one or two or three genes, we, we would find out what's important or what SNPs are important. But obviously the problems are much more complicated. And if you were to uh, look at, to try to find out which genes are responsible for inducing some of the chronic diseases, uh, it may be that any gene mutation might only increase the risk by an epsilon. And you need many uh, gene mutations to get the risk up so that you see uh, a, 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 a diagnosed chronic disease. But we don't know how many, we don't know what the effect of these genes are, what, what the size of the epsilon is. We think it's small. But if it is small and you need lots of genes, it may be you need 10, 20, 30, 100 mutations from a possible population of a thousand genes. So that if you were going to try to uh, predict which people are going to get which diseases, you might need 10 or 20 or 100 gene mutations from a population of a thousand gene genes, and the way and the number of ways of choosing uh, the, the 10 or 20 or 100 from a thousand is, for all practical purposes, infinite. So that it's very hard to reproduce what people have, because the pathways uh, can be very different, although it may result in the same chronic disease. So what I think the future will be is if we continue to emphasize personalized medicine in an attempt to use the genomic profiles of patients to choose therapies, it's going to result in smaller numbers of patients going on study. It might diminish a lot of support for investigator-initiated uh, studies, which really are important for starting uh, novel ways for uh, treating disease. And uh, it may be very self-defeating because I think it's important to uh, enlarge the patient database going into clinical trials. On the other hand, as uh, just was discussed, uh, 
we have to begin to pool our information and maybe if we find clever ways of pooling similar kinds of people with disease uh, and we, if we have the additional information, we may be able to uh, deduce s some uh, advances in stratified medicine where uh, it, w one can choose therapies uh, which uh, are more likely to be successful for that particular patient. Uh, at the break, I was speaking to a physician who said, uh, what all of you are saying is well and good, but I'm faced with what shall I do with my next patient? Uh, how shall I choose the therapies? And I think this is the aim of so-called personalized medicine, but it's going to take a lot of effort and maybe uh, in our lifetime, uh, we, we may uh, ha make an epsilon advance, I don't know, but it seems to me a very difficult uh, problem.